Folks, welcome to Melwani Russian and White Hill with the Obscura Mastermind, Stefan Kumurar. How are you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, giving an interview the very first time for an Indian magazine. <laughs> uh, well, let's go for it. That's awesome. Now, you know, the new album, Acroes, is, is just a few weeks uh, left for the release. Highly anticipated after a long time. It's been around, you know, four to five years since the album is in the making. Three singles already out. How does the band feel among the response which you have received from the fans? The response so far is absolutely overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect um, a, a bad or good review. I, mm-hmm. I haven't had any any thought about that, to be honest, since, uh, as you mentioned, we had five years again in between two albums. Right. We also had five years in between the, the debut and uh, the second album. Sure. But um, this time it, uh, it was a little bit different for me since we, uh, um, well, we have played many, many live shows in the, in the last years, and mm-hmm. I was not sure how um, our fan base and, uh, in, in general, you know, press and, and metal fans overall will, well, um, think about this new album, because we have a couple of new instruments, new influences, and, well, the overall sound um, went into the direction I wanted to go to. And I'm not, you know, if a band evolves, it's not always... Um, the, um, the case that everybody likes it. So right. I'm happy that the response of us is very good and people really dig it. And also your review is, well, nothing more to say. Thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, in fact, and i got to be honest with you that, that with, with an album like Acroesis where the songwriting is is a, a par above than the regular uh, you know, Obscura songs which we have heard so far. But in terms of songwriting, the traditional Obscura sound on this album, was it f- difficult for you to find a balance to make sure you not only, you know, sound different or try different, uh, you know, explore the different heavy metal horizon, but also maintain the traditional Obscura sound? Um, well, to keep the traditional sound, I don't think there was uh, there was any uh, problem behind that. Mm-hmm. The main thing was more like to include the, the new ideas we had and, uh, well, follow the path. Uh, we have been working on mm-hmm. during the last couple of years, and that that was the main um, the main part we have been working with. So um, I wanted to change, for example, a couple of things how to write songs. Right. Um, this especially made this album sound a little bit different. I wanted to have a way more organic and um, so to say natural sound. Mm-hmm. So the production itself also changed a lot. Um, well, where to start? In, in terms of songwriting, for example, in, in the past, we wrote most of the songs, I would say like 90% on sheet music mm-hmm. and sent the, the music to each other because we, we are spread within Germany right. and uh, we cannot like uh, meet once a week and jam in a rehearsal room. This is not going to happen with our band. And to be honest, it also doesn't work for this kind of music. Mm-hmm. It's way too complex to say, oh, well, by uh, at this and this bar at 250 BPM, could you play a different note, please? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not working at all. So um, the problem was when we wrote those songs, they sounded very well, but the computer is playing everything. Right. So I, I was missing a little bit the, the you know, the, the, the real band feeling. And, uh, well, the riffs uh, sound simply different if you play it with a real guitar instead of a MIDI backing mm-hmm. track. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I'd still try to um, keep the idea of writing everything down, but at the same time, we went back to the very early days and simply made demo songs prior um, to entering the studio. So what we did is first writing the song mm-hmm. um, as a demo track. Right. Uh, n- not simple, but also not uh, completely finished. So it was like a, uh, a rough song. And from there on, we wrote everything down on sheet music, mm-hmm. sent this to all the members, and from there on, we started to w- to work on all the details and checked everything out. And after that, we went even to another state and made a complete pre-production for the mm-hmm. whole album. And with this whole preparation, we went into the studio. And from my perspective, it sounds way more fluent. It sounds like one band, since everybody somehow was um, working on some songs. So we all together arranged the songs. Mm-hmm. And, well, I think... This makes a band sounding like like a band. So like in, in a proper the past, collaboration. 
Exactly, exactly, mm-hmm. especially in the uh, arrangements. I mean, right. we had two members writing the songs, mm-hmm. but um, everybody was somehow involved into each and every song. And this makes this album sound, uh, from my perspective, very fluently like like a one piece. In the past, I had the intention that some songs that have been written by one member mm-hmm. or another member sound different from each other. So this time, um, it, it's like it's like one album. It's whatever song you you pick out it sounds like this band in my opinion okay that, that sounds really cool but you know uh, have you kind of arranged any let's say uh, new compositions post the departure of Hannes and Christian or let's say have you taken forward unreleased compositions from let's say their era for Acroesis no no absolutely not we mm-hmm. um, we have been writing music together when both of them have been in the band but we couldn't find a way to uh, um, to find somehow the point where both ideas and, and um, all the ideas of all members link to each other. Right. That's the reason why they, in the end, were, uh, left the band. Okay. So the, the so-called creative differences, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I um, can understand. But, yeah, um, we, we wrote a couple of uh, music together, like mm-hmm. a couple of songs. We even played a new song live uh, on the last tour we did together. But, um, well, due to respect to the old members, we simply did not use anything we wrote together right. back right. then. And we, we just um, started from scratch again. So right. I had a couple, of, a, a couple of, of rough songs laying around here. And uh, when the two members left the band, um, we just started from there again. So without their input. So there's nothing from Christian Münzner or Hannes Grossmann on this album. Right. And I think okay. that's sim- simply fair to them. And I'm not sure what they are doing with their ideas. Maybe they, they are going to release it with, in other uh, bands. They uh, just founded a new uh, power metal band, I saw. Yeah. That's, I, I'm not sure if it fits, but, you know, somehow there are always links between the bands, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, describe your experience working with a new lineup for the album. I mean, apart from the creation of the album itself, what else did you get out of this experience? Um... Well, uh, especially in recording the album, um, mm-hmm. there have been a lot of experiences. For example, working in a different studio with uh, Sebastian Lanzer, with the okay. drummer, which was very interesting. Um, we went, uh, that, that's the part uh, I mentioned prior, um, why we changed the, um, the production of the album, which sounded a little bit different. So, um, together with Sebastian, we went into a different studio. Um, which is like a huge recording studio, like a huge room where usually orchestras or even like big choirs recording. So the room is bigger than the actually recording booth where we okay. uh, um, produced the last albums. And we together worked on a, a kind of double overhead uh, microphone setting. Um, that means that we can work within the mix, um, especially in the dynamics, uh, in the silent parts. So we have a bigger dynamic range within mixing, especially the drums. And this is something I um, really appreciate. And this is something I haven't done prior. And especially thanks to Sebastian Lanzer and also the, the, the involved engineers who helped us getting the sound out. And I think it sounds, it sounds killer. And this is something, an experience I, I won't miss. And I think we are going to go this way to have a way more organic sound. So it's not only straight in your face drumming, all the time that that might be working for like extreme and super aggressive music but we we try to to have this fluent arrangement fluent sounds and if you have a little bit more space within the dynamics more headroom um it sounds a little bit more interesting for the listener and uh, yes well, the sounds it, it, that did, yeah uh, could you continue sorry um no don't worry don't worry uh, and uh, um <laughs> right, Sorry, uh, no, I interrupted uh, you. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, I was just saying, well, the drums sound uh, really different compared to Omnivium, and uh, it sounds beautiful, really. And talking about the drum arrangement, you had the orchestral percussions on Ode to the Sun, which were uh, fantastic, really. It went so well with the choir you worked on. But transitioning from the drum work to now the guitars, the, the part which gets everyone excited, really, uh, in regard to the guitar work, how are you able to manage a balance between your signature sound 
and out of tom or fountain heads uh, signature sounds that and make them work so fluidly because uh, they you know your sound and tom sounds are completely different and it really your the, your own perspectives and his perspectives does reflect on the music that you that you play in all your different projects so how do you make these two uh, different sides all together work so fluidly together um well i have to admit that it didn't work at all and um i recorded seven songs and the two bonus tracks myself because it didn't work out so actually he was recording half of the leads because we shared the lead guitars and um, acoustic guitars and he recorded one song in the end the, the 15 minute piece at home um oh. the rest like the, all the rhythm guitars uh, have been recorded myself and we um used only my guitar setup so he was recording his um, his solos and his material at home, but in the okay. end, we used his uh, the I tracks to um, well uh, to reamp them in the studio, and it's it's all one amp, so it's all only analog live equipment we are also using. Yes. Uh, so another very important aspect of the overall obscure sound is the bass. Uh, the bass has always been very distinct in Obscura sound from the first uh, Cosmogenesis to, well, now the Acrosis, from Jeru and Paul Tessling's playing style to Lioness's compositions and inputs. They are stunning. Uh, were there any specific expectations you had out of the bass and rhythm section? Also considering that Sebastian Lancer is a jazz fusion drummer with a lot of great capabilities and potential. Um, yes, actually, there, there was a, a more uh, a long plan about it. I have to go a little bit back. The the last album, Omnivium, was sometimes in terms of speed very extreme. We we have been playing up to 250 BPM, and we figured out that especially in the live shows, um, it doesn't matter how tight you are. In the end, through DPA, there's more or less only mud coming through because it's simply it's simply too fast. It, it sounds like a I don't know, um, Morbid Angel on speed sometimes. And this is something I would try to avoid because um, on the album that might work very, very well. But uh, if you're playing live, um, this is this is something muddy and it's very hard to mix. So I, I consider Obscura as a, as a live band since we are, we're playing more than 100 shows per, per album. Like okay. the last, I guess, 150, 160 shows. I don't know. But... Um, what I wanted to do with Akrasis especially is reducing a little bit the speed, but focusing more on the rhythm section. Okay. And this is where um, especially Linus and um, Sebastian came into the fold. Yeah, and I... they they worked together simply astonishing in my from my perspective. This is their their sound, especially Linus and Sebastian. They make this album sounding different because Sebastian is bringing in the the input with his odd-time uh, multi-layered uh, drum rolls and yes. drum beats patterns. He, he even brought in gospel, and uh, not only jazz, <laughs> yes. but uh, it, it sounds it sounds simply working. He sometimes plays, for example, in the opening track, Sermon of the Seven Sons, he's playing yes, yes. Um, uh, 15 tuplets against seven against five. And yes. this sounds, as, as a whole, when I first heard this arrangement, very, very bizarre. And the guitars over it, um, they seemed uh, like, well, like a different, different song at the first place. And Linus is coming in here, and he is somehow the person that makes everything gluing together. Uh -oh. And um, compared, it's always hard to compare um, musicians, but uh, compared to um, Jeroen Paul Tesseling, who played uh, prior, Linus is uh, sometimes going a little bit back. So if there's a lot of things happening within the drums and uh, the guitars or vocals, whatever, he's reducing a little bit his, his output. So he's playing more, um, well, to feature the song itself. And on the other hand, when he's shining through with the space arrangements, for example, within lead bass lines, we also put in once again, or acoustic patterns, and he's, he's soloing over that. I think it's, uh, it's a, a different color how his tone is and how he brings in this into the into the whole overall sound. 